Right. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday, middle of the week. Um, we're, you know, full swing into January, into the new year. I hope that you are doing well. Um, I hope that you're taking care of yourself, your spirits, um, those around you, the, the land that we live on. So we welcome, welcome, welcome you. My name's Michelle. I'm joining from a Miskwichiwaskagan, Edmonton Treaty 6 territory. Um, I would love to hear where you're joining from. So feel free to put that in the chat box. Um, we are excited. So this is our first BC Innovate webinar of the year. Uh, so we're really, really excited for our guest speaker today, which is Tira Frazier, who is from Esqueo Air. So super excited. I hope you are too. I cannot wait to hear the story, what she what she's going to share with us today. It's all so, so very exciting. But before we get started, let's just take a moment, press pause. And I feel like we need to practice this. We need to do this in our lives every single day and just take a moment, take a deep breath, maybe close the eyes and just be in this moment. And we acknowledge creator and we thank creator for all the good gifts that have been given to us today. When that sun rose in the east, that was the first gift. Um, we're surrounded by friends and family. We're surrounded by all our relations. We got Mother Earth. We got, I saw bit, um, bunnies outdoors today. Um, we have the sacred waters. So we are surrounded by all of these good gifts that the creator has given to us. So we just want to take a moment and extend gratitude and give thanks for all these gifts and give thanks for all of our relations. So hi, hi, creator. All right. So today's guest speaker, um, and you probably heard her in the news. You've probably heard, you know, seen articles are about her and around her because she's just sounds so phenomenal. So I feel very delighted um, to be able to meet her today for the first time. Um, so she is the first Indigenous woman to launch an airline here in Canada. Um, she has an inspiring story. She's going to share how Esquayo Air came to be and how Esquayo Air is a bridge between traditional air transportation and the sustainable technology of the future. I cannot wait to hear more. Um, so a couple of things that I am like, like just feel excited to share. She has been named the top 100, top 25 women of influence. Why? WCA Woman of Distinction, um, and one of 18 real world heroes in the, what? In the DC Comics Wonder Woman anthology. What? Like that's incredible. Round of applause right there for that. So in 2021, so last year she was ranked 44 on McLean's power list. So we got a powerhouse, a squeal, a powerhouse, a woman in the house today. Um, we are looking forward so much and we're so honored. I realize life must be busy for you that you've like said, okay, I'm going to lend my voice. I'm going to share my story. So we're honored that you've joined us today. Um, and all of you who have joined all of our guests, we're honored that you're here to listen to her story and hear what she has to say. There is an opportunity at the end of her presentation for any questions. So feel free to bring those. Feel free to utilize that chat box and those reaction buttons um, and just encourage our guest speaker. So again, we have Tira Frazier joining us from Esqueo Air. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. So the floor is yours. Well, I can sure see why they have you emceeing these events. What beautiful energy that you bring to, um, you know, the start of something and you know convening people together i just i only met you a few minutes ago and we're Esqueo sisters for sure thank you for such a beautiful energetic grounded uh beginning to our time together so uh and thank you kirsten i can see you you've got even got your video on so i don't feel alone in in uh, zoom land uh, hello to all of you. 
Uh, my name is Tira Fraser, and I am a proud Métis Esquail, and uh, really happy to be with you here today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about what I'm up to, and I'm going to try and leave lots of time uh, for questions to see what it is that you're curious about or what you want to know more of. And um, I'll start just by centering myself a little bit. I, as I mentioned, I'm Métis. My family, uh, many, many, many generations in uh, Fort Chippewan, uh, Northern Alberta. And uh, of course, going back to uh, Red River, I was born in Hay River, uh, Northwest Territories. And um, I was raised most of my years in uh, kind of the middle of British Columbia in uh, Quesnel, Prince George, after my, my uh, father passed away when I was uh, three. And so my mom just kind of started making her way back uh, to the lower mainland where she was from. It took her um, uh, decades to do that. But uh, so I'm joining you today from uh, Musqueam and uh, Tawasin um, sacred uh, lands. And I'm looking outside of my window at my home and a beautiful maple tree in my uh, backyard. And I'm very uh, connected uh, with the trees. And uh, in fact, um, part of uh, a writing that I'm working on, I'm, I'm theming it with, with trees. So know that as I'm uh, sharing with you today, I'm looking at uh, the clouds and the trees and being so grateful uh, to be on these, on these lands. So I'll share my screen a little bit um, and, and go back and forth just so that you have some uh, visuals uh, to see. And uh, here we go. So, and you can see that all right. I've somehow lost my, the people. I can't see the people. This is what happens when you have uh, three three screens happening so give me just not a yet oh not yet okay not yet. so hang on just a moment oh i've got the 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 circle of searching and seeking so bear with me just a moment i seem to be having some technical troubles of course you come Wondering if Tara, if you can forward it to Elsie, we can share screen on this and if helpful. Yeah, I'm having a complete computer malfunction at the moment. So bear with me. The whole thing is, oh, there we go. Ooh, that was, I've never had that happen before. Okay. Okay. Now we've got it. You can see me. I can see you. Yes. I, I just had, you know, that swirling circle of um, nothing good is happening. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me. You come in for a tech check, check everything out, everything works, and then you get started. And of course, you have a trouble. So pardon me. So it is Squail Air, of course. Um, I, I'll talk a little bit about um, uh, why I named it Esquail Air. So two years, uh, two decades, pardon me, in aviation, a very white patriarchal environment where, you know, if I go back all the way, you know, to the beginning, I very much uh, defeminized myself and did everything that uh, I could to, um, to, to be accepted in that environment. And I'm so privileged to have been able to come to a place where I don't need to do that anymore. And I can just be a full disruptor of our industry. And I don't know what is more disruptive than literally calling your airline woman air. And um, in, in, a, in a traditional uh, language, the language of, of my ancestors. It confuses people because people are like, you're Métis, but it's a Cree word. And what does it, you know, I, uh, and, um, but that is the language of the matriarchs in my family. And so I chose the name as an act of reclamation, 
reclamation of womanhood. Let's reclaim beautiful womanhood, reclamation of matriarchal leadership, which is so desperately needed in our world right now, and um, reclamation of language, and actually reclamation of that word also. And uh, so, Escuelo Air. But I'm going to go back a little bit. This is me as um, a wee one. And I put this photo in because it just helps to center me in the long journey um, to coming to a place to have an airline. Humble. It's a humble airline. We have two small aircraft, and I'll show you them in a bit. Um, but all the way from this uh, little girl to uh, someone who has an airline called uh, Woman Air, Esquayo Air. I've put on the bottom, everybody has a hard time saying it, of course. Marketing 101 says don't name something people can't say. And I disrupt that also. These are the things people need to learn to say and the conversations that we need to have. So in the bottom of much of my marketing, it says, PS, it's not that hard to say. And then I, and then I put ISS dash KWAY dash Y O Esquayo. Uh, so there I am as a we, a we Esquayo. And so the journey begins. I mean, you're going to get a really condensed version of the um, journey to uh, to Esquayo Air. But part of it, the most significant part of it, began um, becoming a pilot. So I was 30 years old. I was a single mom, I, um, a single mom of two kids. I had no education. I hadn't even finished high school at that point. I don't like to say that very often, but again, now that I'm where I'm at, I am in such a privileged place where, um, where, where it doesn't have the same impacts on me as it once did. And so I sat cross-legged in the, um, in the chapters bookstore and said, you know, who do I want to be for my children? And what do I want my life to look like? And I wrote a bucket list. And on top of that bucket list was to visit Africa. I wanted to see the zebras and the, um, and the, and, and the elephants. They're so gentle. Those elephants are so mighty and yet so gentle, uh, like many of our matriarchs are. And so I went on while I was in Africa. And let me tell you, I didn't think something like that was possible uh, for someone like me. Like that, making that trip to Africa was such a huge, massive accomplishment for me. And it's important to mention that because it was making that thing possible that then helped make the next thing possible. I went, uh, the picture that you see now is uh, a, um, I went on an aerial tour over the Okavanga Delta in Botswana. And the pilot there was banking the aircraft and telling us stories of the land, telling us stories of the water and the trees and the animals. And I was like, whoa, this guy has the coolest job I have ever seen. And I got down from that trip. And I was like, I'm going to fly an airplane that I want that job. I want that job. And then, you know, I said to myself, sweetie, honey, <laughs> you're a single mom with two kids. You have no education. You have no access to financial support. And um, it's post 9-11. There's no jobs. Something like this just isn't possible uh, for someone like you. Two weeks later, I went uh, skydiving and second time in a small plane. And I can tell you everything about that moment. Uh, I taxied out, well, I didn't taxi out, the pilot taxied out. But I wanted to touch everything. I wanted to touch everything um, in the flight deck. And, um, and I, in that moment, said, I don't care what it takes. Uh, I'm going to fly an airplane. And uh, this was me skydiving. So this is the day that I decided I will absolutely fly an airplane. And uh, I came home to Canada. I started my flight training. Uh, and within a year, I had a commercial pilot's license in hand and made that thing possible. And, 
you know, that's where um, dreams begin. And this is where part of the, you know, journey happens. I'm going to fast forward a whole bunch. So much happened. I can't, an hour is not enough uh, to, uh, <laughs> to tell you all the amazing stories. But um, let me go to uh, the beginning of Esqueo Air. And uh, this is on our announcement day. And this is where much of the media began. Uh, Angela Sterrett, an incredible, amazing uh, journalist and uh, just incredible human being, uh, covered the story. This is the uh, Sweetgrass uh, Warrior, as I named the first airplane, a humble airplane, just uh, um, uh, 10 seats. And this is the Sweetgrass Warrior. And I named it that because for me, uh, I've come to know Sweetgrass as my medicine in so many ways. And it is what grounds me and allows me to be free and flowing. And um, Warrior, because I'm studying, um, uh, I'm working on my PhD and studying the concept of warriorship. And I define warriorship as standing fiercely with deep love for what matters. And so the, the sweet grass warrior uh, is this little um, baby plane right now, uh, how we launched. So we got operating just prior to COVID. We made our launch, we asked our permission from the Musqueam. We made our launch announcement. And we got our operating certificate in October, October 2019, just months before 9-11. And so, you know, innovating like we do in many ways, we um, launched a campaign uh, that we called Airlift to bring essential supplies to Indigenous communities in British Columbia. We raised the funds, got donations, asked the communities, what do you need? What can we do to bring you a little love and lift? And that was through COVID. I'm so proud that an airline startup is like next level hard. An airline startup in a global pandemic is like pretty much impossible. And I'm so proud to say that uh, in that time, we launched an aircraft um, maintenance organization and led by uh, who you see me with here, uh, Alicia Sopal. So we lead, um, launched our own ammo so that we can uh, fix, uh, we can fly them and we can fix them and we can fix other people's. And I'm very proud of that. We've brought on an indigenous uh, woman engineer and an indigenous um, uh, aircraft maintenance engineer um, apprentice, which is super cool. So now I'm gonna test my technology again and see if I can get a video going for you. It's just two minutes long, so. Please bear with me and let's see if I can make it happen. There we go. So new share. And Michelle, you'll give me a nod because I can see you if you can hear it and see it play, all right? <clears throat> So we can't see it. He can't hear it. I can hear it. No visual. No visual. All right. Let me try again. Okay. But the music was inspiring with the picture. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, we've got we've got one thing going. We've got one thing going. No problem. I sometimes I joke and say I can fly airplanes, but you know, Zoom technology. Well, that's a whole that's a whole nother thing. Right. So, right. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll stop sharing and then go again. All right, let's see how this goes.
Awesome. We're very we're very proud of starting our uh, aircraft um, maintenance uh, organization. So uh, there we go. And uh, so let me just get back to my other screen here. Perfect. And you can see that all right. Back to where we were. Excellent. Amazing. See, getting better at this, right? I should be paying for training. All right. And uh, so then we start our own ammo, and then we were able to bring a second aircraft online. This is Strawberry Moon. And we named this aircraft Strawberry Moon because she came to us in June, of course. So she must be called Strawberry Moon. Uh, the time of coming together, the time of reconciling, and um, super proud uh, of that. Then we were able to launch our first scheduled service just a few months later in Qualicum Beach. And we had the Musqueam see us off from Vancouver on our first flight and the Qualicum First Nation greet us in Qualicum, which uh, was really beautiful in a traditional way. And Mary Point of YBR, who is a, a huge supporter, um, is uh, related to both nations. So it was really cool to have her be uh, a part of that. The most important thing I want to talk to you about today is um, we're talking about innovation. And at Escuela Air, we see ourselves as the bridge between traditional air transportation and the sustainable technology of the future. Whatever that looks like, we're, we're not attached to what kind of technology that is. We are committed to walking more softly on Mother Earth. We're bringing Indigenous knowledges together with modern technologies, advanced air mobility, uh, that literally the future of transportation is about to be forever changed. With the introduction of advanced air mobility or EVATOL, um, electric vertical takeoff and landing technology, but essentially people, goods and services will be transported using electric, hydrogen fuel cell technology in between urban and regional settings to people in places that have been previously underserved, our communities. And it's here, the technology is here, it's in development. And I am so committed to seeing indigenous peoples leading in this space to seeing how Indigenous peoples and communities can be served by this technology and part of it. And um, how we can, I say, let's reimagine, rematriate, and rebuild the air transportation, air, air transportation system, centering equity and sustainability. And the technology is here. It's here now. And I'll say it again, because together we can, we will reimagine, rematriate, and rebuild an air transportation system that centers equity and sustainability. And let's bring Indigenous peoples and communities to the forefront to decolonize to decarbonize and to transform our skies for the next seven generations. Uh, we're very honored to be one of 18 founding members of the Canadian Advanced Air Mobility Consortium. And I wanna talk about this because in the Western world, in the page dominant patriarchal white system of aviation and aerospace, we don't collaborate. We don't hardly even talk to each other. Are you kidding me? But this amazing uh, ecosystem is bringing together all the different parts, important parts of the whole system to actually advance the movement um, of zero emission um, aviation. And it's growing and it's growing more. This is now already an old slide because it's a couple weeks old. So uh, we know that there are uh, so many opportunities for Indigenous peoples to be involved um, and to lead, to not just get a job at the ass end of something, 
no to lead in this innovative space and you know cam's vision is you know basically how do we all work together uh in unity um to uh see zero emission low emission like i just said let's can we just walk a little more softly on mother earth or a whole lot more softly on mother earth and urgently now and we specifically um, have a, a research project that looks at how do we bring Indigenous knowledges together with modern technologies to uplift Indigenous land story, sovereignty, and stewardship. And we've been hosting circles and conversations uh, for close to a year uh, to hear and listen about how we can um, like we're rebuilding, honestly, you take COVID, you take emerging technology that hasn't happened since the Wright brothers, like since aircraft flew. And so we have this opportunity to actually rebuild it um, with the right people influencing how that is done. These conversations are so uh, critical. And then, as you said, Michelle, yes, um, featured in um, the wonderful Woman of the World uh, DC Comics, um, and I'm going to put a link in the um, in the uh, chat. What time do we have? Two thirty. It's just a couple minutes. Maybe I'll I'll play it. It's such a cool video. But what is featured here on the screen is an initiative that me and Esquio Air are involved in. Uh, called Give Them Wings, which is to inspire Indigenous youth uh, to take flight. So do you want to just watch this little two minute video? I'm seeing a, a, a nod from Michelle. So let me do that. Give me one second. I should have by this. I should have my own tech team. I think I'm going to like put an order in for my own tech team. I think that's a great idea. OK, so. Okay, we can see it. Excellent. All right. You'll give me a nod, letting me know that you can hear it, Michelle. And away we go. The first time I was ever in a small plane, my first exposure to aviation, I was awestruck. My heart came to life. Give Them Wings is an opportunity for Indigenous youth between the ages of 15 and 39, to check out an airplane, to be able to operate a simulator and maybe even take a, a discovery flight and see if their heart comes to life too. At Give Them Wings, we ask the Indigenous youth to finish the sentence, flying is. And this is what they said, flying is freedom. Flying is a door to new adventures and possibilities. Flying is gnarly. Flying is freeing. Flying is cool. Flying is magic power. Flying is a great adventure. Flying is life. Flying is touching heaven. Flying is triumph. The wonder of flight is awe-inspiring. Amelia Earhart said, you haven't seen a tree until you've seen its shadow from the sky. Give Them Wings is inviting you to come see a tree's shadow from the sky. So my own thing gets me every time when I say flying is triumph. Mm -hmm. Every time. I've watched that video uh, countless times uh, because for me, that's exactly what it was, was triumph. Thank you. And uh, I'll take whatever questions and curiosities you have. Uh, oh, like, I am so, so incredibly moved and so honored and so proud um, that you are a trailblazer. I'm sure you've heard that countless times 
And I just want to add that. Um, I'm so thankful that you were here. I, I just, I feel moved. I feel like I want to go out into the world and do my thing. It may not be flying, but you've totally inspired that. So thank you so much. Um, so anybody, just one moment, who may have a, a question, you can either put in the chat box if you're not quite comfortable coming, you know, online. A chat box is awesome. You can raise your hand. We would love to um, just have a, a little discussion with today's guest speaker. I have a question about being an entrepreneur. So what, okay, aside from this deep passion that you have, um, what, what also, what motivates you as an entrepreneur? So I believe with my whole heart that co-creating the conditions for Indigenous peoples in business to thrive is the single most natural, effective, and swift pathway to economic reconciliation in our country. So we'll say that to start. Well, in, and in anywhere, probably. That, of course, comes from an entrepreneurial lens. But what makes me want to be a, an entrepreneur? Um, to be responsible, and some days is terrible responsibility, but to be responsible for your own um, success. To be, a, I literally have the word liberty tattooed on my foot um, because this idea of, um, being uh, free and being able to um, create one's own destiny, you know, own your mistakes, own your successes. And, um, and to be, you know, I want to, part of why I want to be an entrepreneur is um, to create an environment that I fit in, to create an environment where I belong, to create an environment where um, the things that I bring that aren't always appreciated in our dominant Western world um, don't get kicked to the side. They're actually centered. And I'd like to make some money also, but that's not <laughs> that it's still working on that. So you said it took you a year to get your license. Is that the proper word? Yeah. So how is that process? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. People ask me how, you know, when I look back and say, how did I go from a very first flight to a commercial license in hand in, in a year is, is, um, is, is wild to me. I don't know how I did that because I worked two jobs and I had two small kids. And, uh, but yeah, so you go through a series of, you know, get, you get a private license, you get a commercial license, and then you get a license to be able to operate a multi-engine aircraft. And then you meet a whole bunch of requirements and, and then are able to obtain a, um, a commercial license. And at every step of the way, there's always a, um, a written or theory component and a actual assessment of your practical skills. Um, we do have a, a question in the chat box. So what challenges or opportunities have you arose from during the pandemic? I mean, you you already said that you started this right in the midst of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. what other challenges did you have? And then opportunities that came your way? Mm -hmm. I'll talk about the um, opportunity first, um, because that's what's coming to my mind first. So, uh, you know, when... When I first started, you know, you saw the, you know, CBC clip and lots of media attention. And so every journalist would ask me, you know, what is the, what is the great big vision? You know, what is the, you know, what is the big thing that you, that you want to, to do? And I, I knew what the journalists wanted to and expected to hear, which was, you know, we're going to have, you know, a thousand airplanes and we're going to be serving, you know, the entire nation of Canada or maybe, you know, internationally or North America internationally. Um, and I wanted to say that too, but it didn't feel right. And so what the opportunity, um, uh, the pandemic gave me was to actually, when everything kind of falls apart, 
you are invited to really reassess and really think about what, um, who am I, <laughs> who am I going to be in this pandemic and, you know, who am I going to be in the future? And so my efforts to, um, around sustainability were always there. It was always part of, of the vision, but then it became a real driving centered part of it, not as something to think about or, or work towards in the future, but actually to put the efforts in now. And uh, I'm really grateful for that. I think the opportunities from the pandemic, this is more on a, on a maybe even uh, spiritual or, or um, heart centered uh, sense, but I think the opportunity for all of us in the pandemic is uh, from an Indigenous perspective, we, we understand uh, collectiveness, we understand how everything impacts everyone, we understand that um, collective grief, we understand that collective joy, that collective responsibility, and this pandemic has really invited the whole world to experience um, the power of um, the collective, the power of community, the power of, of understanding our interconnectedness. This virus has, has been like, you think we're, you can separate anybody, anything? It's all, all interconnected. Some of the challenges um, have been extraordinary. Um, uh, I have a huge amount of um, privilege uh, Métis on my dad's side and uh, European settler on my mother's side, I hold a lot of um, uh, privilege, uh, light skin privilege. And, uh, you know, in this pandemic, I have experienced more racism and sexism than um, I ever, I ever have. And, um, you know, the challenge is to literally try and keep uh, an airline uh, moving when, you know, okay, you, you can't responsibly be taking people anywhere. <laughs> and, you know, how do you, how do you keep it all moving? And how do you, how do you serve? That was one of, you know, the opportunities that comes out of the challenges, right? They're, they're, they're interconnected to, to say, okay, all I can do is take what I have and try and figure out ways to serve our people, to try and serve um, communities. Um, Financial um, stress, uh, physical uh, stress, um, where you're just like, I just have to keep going, but there's, you don't get a season. There's no, there's not been a season of, 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 of rest, um, of restoration. And, you know, one of the challenges is also feeling, um, uh, a huge amount of responsibility to succeed to make this work through the pandemic there's been times where i didn't know if i was going to make it and um the hmm, heartache that that feels when um when people are you know someone i really respect um an indigenous woman i have a huge amount of respect for she said tira our girls are watching you and all our young people are watching you. And so that huge feeling of um, responsibility feels overwhelming uh, sometimes. And mm, those are some, some of the challenges. I'll, I'll stop there to see if there's anything people are, are curious to know more about. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, the requirements of of I guess resiliency of of inner strength of being so committed to this vision and and this this dream this passion, um, is obvious that you you're kept going in the pandemic and then you even talked about you know you're in a industry where it's male dominated and to have to um, also on top of everything else you have to work through and hustle through that, mm -hmm. um, so thank you for sharing a little bit about that I know Elizabeth. Yeah. Well, when, 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 um, in those times where I didn't know that I was going to make it, um, and maybe I still don't know if I'm going to make it, but this is what I say to myself. I'm going to look back at this moment. I'm going to look back at this moment and say, remember, 
when you start an airline in a global pandemic and um, you didn't think you were going to make it, and then you did. Yeah, that's the story that must be had. Mm. Hi, hi. Elizabeth says, you know, you're you're inspiring all of us. And, you know, you're talking about that one um, woman who said, you know, are you the young girls are watching you. And it's so true. So you're inspiring so many people. Um, so Elizabeth, her dream is to get her pylons. Go pylons. get it. Go get it. <laughs> so what advice would you have for someone who has a full time job and is, is also a full time parent yes. and where it starts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, one of my isms that I say all the time is dream it, design it, do it. Um, just take the first step and keep moving. So, you know, what is what is it that you want to dream? Um, how are you going to make it happen? And then just, you know, doing it and just starting, starting somewhere, you know, and so the start is to make sure you like it. So to take a, a private pilot ground school, go take a familiarization flight uh, and make sure that, you know, because it doesn't matter, um, like whatever, whatever your dream ends up being, and sometimes it changes, but you know, that's where I would start. And the, the biggest thing is just not to let like all those negative self-talk member in my story, when I was just like, sweetie, honey, you're, you know, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? How there's all these things that just are going to make it impossible. And I don't know, I just try and set all those things to the side and say, okay, well, how can I make it possible? And the biggest thing is, and we know how to do this. We know how to do this. We know how to ask people um, for their help, for their support. I didn't do this by myself. I can tell you, I did none of this, zero of it by myself. This is uh, everything that is happening is as a result of everyone uh, contributing and everyone helping and me being brave enough and humble enough to ask for help. Like um, my kids are old enough. I can probably say this now, but you know, everybody else would send their kids to school and say, don't go with strangers. And I would send my kids to school and say, okay, if a stranger comes to pick you up, go with them because <laughs> I haven't been able to make it home because I'm flying or something like that. Um, but, you know, so I would send a girlfriend or I would send, you know, somebody um, to, to help me. So just that, um, that asking, believing that it can be possible, asking for help, finding the help, just get started and just keep moving. Okay. And, and, and also, um, I'll, I'll let me know how I can support you. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. Let me know how I can, how I can support you. We're trying to, you know, um, find and keep track of all the indigenous, um, pilots, engineers, you know, the people that are in our field so that we can find ways, uh, to support and uplift, um, connect. I don't know what I'll be able to do, but, um, yeah. Okay, so if somebody such as Elizabeth is very interested in getting her pilot's license, this is what I heard. Um, find a private pilot ground school. Would that be the first step? That's your first step, Elizabeth. Yeah. I look forward to hearing a report on that next week. <laughs> okay. Um, and then also, I think mentorship is really important too. And so maybe reaching out to other people who are in the industry. I mean, you're the only, you know, Indigenous woman in this field right now. Uh, so there's actually more. I is there more? I was so excited to find more and find that there's, you know, actually um, a woman who is a part owner of an airline up in the Northwest Territories, another Indigenous woman who's a part owner of a float plane uh, company here in British Columbia. And so there's more than, than we know. And the First Nations Technical Institute um, in, um, I think they're in Ontario, um, are, uh, it's all Indigenous. It's all Indigenous uh, flight training program. Wow, that's a really good um, resource right there. Awesome. Okay, you also said, you touched on this a little bit, and I don't know if you want to elaborate, but you, you know, reporters will come to you, hey, what, where do you see yourself in the future? What's the big dream? But like, what would be a long-term goal of yours? 
um, say 10 years, five, let's go five years. What would be a, a five year goal? Uh, it's all the same. Uh, I want to see us. Um, I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about, you know, kind of Escuayo air focus, but uh, it's all the same. I want to see us um, walking more softly on Mother Earth. I want to see a more equitable, accessible transportation system um, that uh, where Indigenous peoples are, are leading. There's so many opportunities in um, you know, in battery infrastructure, in solar, in the um, in the innovation of um, you know vertiports and other parts of the system that are are going to be uh, critical. I want to see indigenous peoples, um, you know, um, wrenching and flying and thriving, and communities that this technology uplifts um indigenous land story uh sovereignty and stewardship that's that's what i want to see that's what i dream of beautiful dream like I, I believe when we share our story so when you share your story today or wherever you go because you've been all over like i've read about you i've heard about you in 2021 that you are planting seeds, that you are inspiring, you know, our young women and more, the, the circle um, to, you know, pick up, pick up that wrench or to get into this field, to think outside of the box and think yeah. of the possibilities that we can do as Indigenous people. So yeah, thank leave you. that box behind. Honey. Leave that box. Leave that box behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see Amanda, her hand is raised. So I think she has a question. Awesome. Sorry about that. That's good. Oh, I'm a little nervous to say hello to you. Don't be nervous. Um, hello. <laughs> I'm Nihi Awesqueo too. My grandpa is from Port Chipwayan. Ah, so hello. My dad lives near you. He lives in uh, Easter, East uh, Vancouver, okay. uh, Southeast Vancouver. So you got some some Cree over there too. Got Perfect. Some relatives over there. Um, I remember reading about you in a business magazine a couple years ago, and I was so amazed. I was so glad and I was so happy for you. And I didn't even know you. Mm -hmm. I just knew that you were in a swale that was moving forward for our people. And I, I, I keep getting emotional when I keep hearing you talk the way you talk. And uh, my daughter was in here while I was watching and mm -hmm. One of her goals was to be a pilot and I showed her your picture and I showed her the first plane mm -hmm. and uh, we walk in ceremony most days and you know we go to a lot of ceremony every month so all the words and the words that are coming out of your mouth make it a big effect mm -hmm. you know so what I wanted to know was I think a lot of it was answered was when you made that decision to become that pilot, how long did you know that you were going to be like you, to build your, your company, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like how long did that realization take from become like having that employee into becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah. So I did. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming and sharing your question. And thank you for also sharing your, your open heart. Um, and inviting us all to do the same. Uh, so, you know, from an employee, I was like, this is, this is kind of hard and this is kind of not a great environment. And I'm working with, you know, um, generational differences, gender differences, and certainly worldview differences, although I didn't see it that way at the time. But I don't know, I just was like, I want to fly airplanes, I want to do this, but I'm not enjoying the environments that that I'm in. And so um, it took uh, probably close to not quite a decade of working in the industry. Um, and then my family made lots of sacrifices um, for my dreams. I have, um, I have it at my other desk, but uh, my daughter, when she was really little said, um, dreams can come true. She made me this little um, felt um, art piece. And um, my 
my family made a lot of uh, of of compromises of sacrifices to support uh, my dreams. And when my mom passed away, I just didn't I didn't want that anymore. I wanted something uh, different. And so kind of all the things came together to say, OK, and this wasn't my first aviation company. I started an aerial survey company that I um, started in uh, uh, 2010 and uh, built up and then sold in 2016. And so it was there that I started my entrepreneurial journey because it takes a bit of well, not a bit quite a bit of courage right to uh, to be an entrepreneur especially you know when there's you know high capital costs and all of that i'd never been an entrepreneur i'd never taken a business course i'd never done any any of that and um you know but it was just like when i talk about each thing that i made possible made the next thing uh possible so it took a long time uh to get to here and it ain't done yet i don't know what you know what the next thing is i'm working right now on a on a project to start a um, all electric um, flight training unit and be able to train um you know young young people um that are inspired um by the wonder of of, of flight and so but it did take a long time mm -hmm. thank you it's so nice to meet you so good to meet you too i'm glad you said hello Oh, thank you for the question, Amanda, and um, the heartfelt comments that went along. Um, so you had talked about you were taking a P you're taking a PhD or you're working towards. Did I hear that right? You're working I know. I know. Lots has happened. You see how I like fast forwarded through a, a lot of a lot of stuff um, from a you know high school dropout to, uh, you know, but yeah, I'm. Uh, um, I'm back actually, uh, I never ever imagined that this would ever be part of my future, but I teach at a university, I teach at Royal Roads University in uh, leadership, the Master of Arts in Leadership, amazing program, I'm an alumni of that program, and um, I started working on my PhD, specifically um, uh, looking at and researching this idea of remembering, reclaiming, practicing, and integrating warriorship. And warriorship as I define it as standing fiercely with deep love for what matters and what would be possible in the world if we were all doing that. Wow, that's incredible. I think I, I tried to, I've been writing notes <laughs> and I have sticky notes everywhere. So I'm trying to write all of these things, but okay. Can you say that one more time? Warriorship is standing with what you love. Mm -hmm. No, I so that's okay. okay. So standing fiercely. There we go. So we need to be fierce sometimes, but we need, be, we need to be fierce with deep love for the things that matter. To me, that's warriorship, standing fiercely with deep love for what matters. I and we know this. We know this. We remember this. Yeah. I am so inspired. And I, oh, Ken. Yes, Kate, we have just a couple of moments. All right, Ken, ask that question. And have you seen the book uh, called Warrior Handbook by Lewis uh, Paul? I haven't. I haven't, Ken, but I saw your notes in the chat and I'm so excited to uh, open up my uh, email and have a look. Okay, so I've sent it to you via email. It's uh, by Lewis Hall. He's the uh, uh, the uh, gentleman that uh, uh, Mohawk, uh, uh, that uh, designed the Warhawk, uh, the Warhawk, the Mohawk uh, warrior flag. So uh, okay. yeah, so if you have any, you. any problems, uh, uh, just contact uh, uh, Can Do. They can get me and I, I'll get you the, I'll get you the PDF. Uh, the PDF. So if, if it doesn't, if somehow that email doesn't get through. So thank you, thank you. Well, Woohoo! I feel like I want to see that PDF as well. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, any last comments, questions be before we close our session? I, I tell you, I'm amazed and inspired. Um, oh, mm -hmm. how do you balance work and home life as an entrepreneur? That's an excellent question, Danielle. Well, my typical answer for this is um, I don't do it daily, uh, or maybe sometimes I do, but I don't I don't hold myself to doing it daily. I've always operated my balance in seasons. 
um, including in this dominant Western world that we're living in. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the challenge has been I'm I'm at the it's been a long winter <laughs> and a long season of of, of work, but uh, it's a real uh, challenge to balance that. And you know, for me, I think what's helpful is to not think about it as um, separate or segregated. To think of it as a, you know, to look at my whole my whole life and um, how is that serving um, me and how is that serving others and 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 the mindfulness around and I am not an expert in this and I can tell you that I'm only some of the time getting it right but um, where where is my energy going it's like your energy is nutrients and so where is my energy going because whatever you send your nutrients you know, is is what is going to flourish and grow. So just that mindfulness around how am I choosing to share my energy and where am I getting and sending uh, the nutrients? I could listen to you for, do you have a podcast? Like, do you have a, like, I could listen to you for, uh, for a while. So, wow. Thank you. You, thank you so much for um, just spending the hour with us. You Welcome. Um, have brought so much to, you know, to my heart and my spirit. And I trust that you have for everybody listening and joining us and watching this webinar. So thank you. I know that the ancestors are proud. They are cheering you on. And so keep doing your thing. Um, keep paving those paths. And so thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. I, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Um, but thank you so much. You're a gift. You're a gift to this world and, and a gift to this circle this afternoon afternoon. So thank you. And so everybody, I hope that you're walking away um, with your spirit stirred, um, that the, the dream and the passion that you have within you, that trust that that is what creator has given to you. And sometimes we need to step out in the faith. We have to step sometimes out in fear too, with our knees shaking and not sure, is this going to happen or not? But follow that passion, follow that call of your heart, mm -hmm. and you can only make the circle stronger around you. So thank you all for joining us. Um, oh, I'm so delighted and so honored. I hope you have a good rest of the day and walk well and walk softly on this land. Peace, everyone.